Can't get enough of Kelly and Rumya? We're now on YouTube for you to indulge in highlights from our show. Can't get enough of Kelly and Rumya? We're now on YouTube for you to indulge in highlights from our show. Today, Mark Workman is with us and usually reporting in on stuff from the Edmonton area. But today we got a real treat. He's staying up late to speak to us because today he's in Dubai at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, which we have heard a lot about. Our CBC has been talking a lot about it. Us over here at AMI have been covering it. Mark, welcome back to the show. And usually we like to ask you, where the heck are you? Or where you been, Mark? Today it's got to be, Mark, we're checking in. Where are you? You're in Dubai and you've got a lot going on there. First of all, let's start with when the heck did you arrive? Let's get. Let's begin there. Well, before that, I have to admit, double speed all the time. Every yes, time. thank <laughs> you. There's, so there's there is three of you. Easy There's one. three all there's... together now that we've mentioned. <laughs> Ryan, who has yeah, been converted, no, am, so there's that as well. Absolutely. It's the only way. I am uh, in Dubai, as you mentioned, in a country called the United Arab Emirates, attending what's commonly called COP28. I got here quite a while ago, back on November 30th, so it's been a couple of weeks, but before that I was actually in Thailand, so it's been almost three weeks on the road. I look forward to uh, coming home tomorrow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, we'll get into more of the details of what's going on there, especially how it impacts the disability world. But can you tell us a little bit about Dubai and uh, what the town has been like, if you've been able to get out and see? I'm not, I think you've been there before. Um, fill us in on those kind of details that all of us sit back. Like, Sounds cool. Oh, not so cool. Yeah, this was my first time. So it's been quite an interesting experience. Um a lot of people, uh, this it's not so much affecting me, but a lot of people talk about how beautiful it is. So it's very futuristic looking. There's a lot of money in this uh, country, largely due to um, having a lot of oil, which is in high demand. Um, so it's really, I think, a beautiful city for visually speaking. Um, very uh, different kind of culture, though. It's predominantly, of course, Muslim city. So that means that you can regularly hear the call to prayer when you're out and about. It means that uh, you don't, uh, you're not able to have a, a glass of beer or wine with your dinner. Typically, I mean, in the hotels, it's a little different. They understand that a lot of people would be visiting from other countries in hotels. But if you're kind of out in the city, uh, you won't find that. Uh, even things like having a, a train car in the metro that's specifically right. for women only, right? Things like that are uh, show you that you're in a very different uh, culture, a very different country. Mm. Wow, I was going to ask you about the transit, if you've had that opportunity to be out, because they, yeah, there's some great. interesting things in the way the transit works, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we did take the metro just to experience it, kind of test out the accessibility. Uh, really, really impressed with it. It was very clean. Um, the the announcements were great. They're in English and Arabic. Uh, so really, really nice, uh, fast, speedy metro train. Awesome. Okay. All right, so yeah. we've all been hearing different stories about um, COP28, COP28, and maybe some mixed feelings. So tell us about the disability side of things first, um, because we want to know what's been going on there and uh, if you have any particular ideas or feelings or perspectives or just information on people with disabilities around this conference. Yeah, it's hard to know with certainty exactly how many people are here from the disability community. Some people would have traveled on their own and may not have connected with the sort of larger disability group. But the group that I've been involved with and meeting with on a kind of a daily basis even is around 50 people that have uh, decided to come, which is the largest presence of the disability community ever at one of these uh, climate change events. Huh. Um, so it's been great to see that sort of engagement. Um, and you can tell there have been attempts to make things more accessible and inclusive for people with disabilities, uh, right? So there are some tactile markings and things like that if you're blind. Um, so there are some, uh, there are buggies as well for those who have some mobility challenges, but a lot of work still to do. Uh, if you're a sign language user, for example, it was very hit and miss and, and very rare that you would see sign language at an event. It was sort of just if uh, maybe an event organizer had a particular concern for making that event more 
accessible than they might have sign language, but a lot of them, uh, a lot of them did not. And then for those who did have mobility challenges, it's a massive event. I mean, there are roughly 100,000 people that attend this thing. So it's it, it can take 25 minutes to walk from one event, like one, oh, uh, yeah. one room to another in this place. So, mm. so, so that was a bit of a challenge. Um, so, so still more work to do, but we did see some some positive steps towards accessibility, which is something that we're really happy about. Mark, when you were mm -hmm. prepping to go uh, and all of the, I guess, I don't know, sign up is the right way of saying it, but when you were prepping, to go were there conversations questions around what you would need for accommodations as a person with a disability in the registration we were able to uh, provide some of that information and for example for us we had a limit of two representatives that we could take from our organization but we need uh, sighted guides often to help in these situations right. I mean for uh, someone who's totally blind to navigate a brand new massive uh, event space like this is, is very challenging. So uh, to do it efficiently, you really want to have some support. And so we were able to say, uh, you know, we need uh, we'd like to request additional badges so that others can attend to support us. And that was that was no problem. So so that was a nice uh, a nice accommodation, you could call it. Mm. OK, so we're visiting with Mark Workman, our community <laughs> reporter who's in Dubai. Um, can you talk, despite some of the challenges, getting around different things like that, your feeling is that for sure, we, the disability community, should be present there um, and being able to sit at the table, hear these conversations. I'm curious as to some of the reasons why, and I wonder right off the bat, media. Um, ha have you known of any media addressing, asking questions of some mm -hmm. of the others, the 50 that you mentioned that uh, have disabilities that are there? I mean, the main reason is just because as people with disabilities, as people on this planet, we're going to be affected by climate change and, and thus we're going to be impacted by the policies that come into place to deal with uh, the impact of climate change. So, so we really want to be at the table to make sure that our circumstances are taken into consideration when policies are being developed. Uh, that, that's, I think, the main reason to be here. For regarding media, we definitely we ourselves had some conversations with media, uh, and one of the journalists said that she had been to a number of these uh, COP events, and this was the largest disability group that she had seen. So we became more visible, which is great as well, uh, to, yeah. to just show people that we are here, we care about these issues, and we're willing to take the time out of our lives to attend these events and make sure that our issues are being taken into consideration. We also, though, had to do a lot of asking questions ourselves. So mm. when we attended events, um, and there's and unfortunately, there wasn't a ton of inclusion of people with disabilities in the events themselves, right, as panelists. Right. But yeah. when there was an opportunity to ask a question at the end, you can bet that those those 50 or so people that they were often putting their hands up, the first to put their hands up and asking questions. And it really did force the people on the stage to think about uh, things that they may not have thought about. Yeah, I mean, it's a snapshot of reality, right? Like, this is life with a disability. You're seeing it firsthand for the people who've showed up um, and and representing disability in that way, or at least, like, the accommodation side of things. So, obviously, that's a, a huge point. Uh, you mentioned climate change policies. So, I think it would be helpful to understand the change uh, or the understanding of some of these issues better. So, what are the topics that were being discussed that people with disabilities Disabilities are affected by. Can you help us understand some of the issues? Definitely. And one is um, a topic that we have actually discussed at a previous uh, community report. And this was related to the wildfires and that happened over the summer. And we talked about the importance of being prepared when natural disasters occur. And of course, with climate change, you're going to see more frequent and more severe natural disasters. And so this is an obvious area where climate change policy response to natural disasters that people with disabilities are really deeply affected. If you're not able to easily evacuate, that's a very dangerous situation. If you're not able to access the emergency shelters, if you're not able to access the early warning systems that tell you when a natural disaster is coming, then you are you know, much more uh, vulnerable. And, and there are some statistics 
statistics that show that you know people with disabilities are four times more likely to be uh, killed in natural in these extreme natural disasters than people without disabilities. So that's a really obvious one. It's not the only one though. There's other topics that we were talking about around adapting our environments for climate change. So we we may have to think about how we build cities differently, how we build buildings differently. When we put in green spaces, are we making sure that we're building them in ways that are inclusive and accessible, or are we uh, perpetuating sort of the, the exclusion and putting up barriers for people? So how we build our cities, especially, to adapt to climate change is a really important topic mm. that we raised. Yeah. And the last one I'll mention, though, is the term just transition, which you probably heard in the media coverage. So when we say mm -hmm. just transition, we're talking about how we're going to need to um, transition away from fossil fuel based jobs into greener jobs. And of course, we know that people with disabilities are often excluded from the employment sector, right? We're either higher, we're higher rates of unemployment, higher rates of underemployment. And so when we're talking about creating a sort of a new economy, a new greener economy, are we thinking about how we're going to include people with disabilities in those jobs so that we don't, again, we don't replicate or we don't uh, continue with the existing inequalities that we have today? You bet. Mark, I got a minute. So super interesting stuff, of course. But what's next? What happens after you leave COP? How do we build on these discussions, everybody that you guys are having over there? I think there's a couple of key areas of work for us to do, you know, as we return to our, our homes after this event. We really want to build on the relationships and the connections that were formed here. So this includes strengthening that disability community that I mentioned that was here, uh, you know, maybe formalizing it a little bit more, planning for next year earlier, you know, starting in January, we plan to, to uh, right. start working on things for the following one, uh, but also strengthening those relationships, those connections we made with governments, with civil society organizations, academics and private companies, <clears throat> which we had a lot of opportunities to meet here at COP. And then the last area I would say is really sharing this information, raising awareness, educating the, the disability community a bit more through things like this conversation that we're having, you know, sharing with people that this is an issue that will affect you and that uh, you can do some advocacy on in your in your local uh, community, but we want to be able to provide those those supports, those resources, that information, so that people feel more confident to talk about the issue and to talk about the solutions that will work for them. We're uh, Mark Workman, our former Edmonton uh, community reporter, now known as the Wandering <laughs> Community Reporter. Uh, we will talk to him next month, wherever the heck he might be. Best of the season to you, uh, Mark. This is just beautiful for you to share and give us a perspective. Uh, look forward to our next chat, man. Oh, thanks so much for the opportunity. I always love to, to talk to you guys. Uh, happy holidays, and we'll talk to you again next year. You bet. Thanks for watching. You can catch Kelly and Rumya weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on AMI. Thanks for watching. You can catch Kelly and Rumya weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on AMI.